Hello, welcome back. How are you? Welcome back to Paragon Ridge Ranch. I'm Chrissy. If you haven't already subscribed to us, please do so right now before you forget. Today, we are welcoming a new animal to the farm. Well, many animals, but a new type of animal, a new species of animal. Hold on one second and I'll show you what it is. Get down, Diesel. not as light as I thought it was but what I have here is a coop of some sort for our new farm animals that we have so let's get this baby home and put it by the barn and then we'll get on with the show made it back home with our new coop for whatever species or new farm animal or animals that we're gonna have and look who's here what's going on guys Ricky and his family came to visit us this weekend. They've been doing tons of man stuff. They've been out there hunting for squirrels and coyotes. Right now they're working on some logs. I don't know what else they have planned for the day, but me and Brittany have been inside cooking all day. And now it's time to talk about what Ricky brought me. All right, so she got this cage from your neighbor, right? Mm -hmm. And so I came with some eggs. I got quail eggs and chicken eggs. And so the quail are just a Katornix meat bird and then the uh, chicken eggs. I've got a mix between a uh, barred rock with a uh, red sex link as the parents and then those are the red eggs and then I got some leghorns that are also with the uh, red sex link uh, rooster and then I just got some red sex links mixed in there that are just full blood red sex links and so I brought those. I What did we bring? I brought three 18 packs. Yeah. But one of those are full of quail. Yeah. And so we, we just brought a ton of eggs. I brought a whole bunch. So I'm hoping they have a lot of success and so. And we're gonna be sharing those with you here in just a little bit after we unload this coop. Well, it's the next day. I wasn't able to get the eggs in the incubator because I had to move out some of the chicks to go to the fruiter. And I had to go get that quail cage that I got from the neighbors. And Ricky and Jeremy and Preston have been really, really busy. Now it's Sunday. I now am going to put these eggs in the incubator. had quail before and I absolutely love them. It was about two years ago or a little bit over two years ago when I bought eggs. I bought several of these little packs of eggs. They were so cute and they were so cuddly and they were like little cotton balls bounced around and they're pretty noisy too. So I'm going to go ahead and play you a little bit of the video from a couple years ago right after my hat. <laughs> And they grow so fast. They're pretty hardy. They're super cute and super friendly. Like every time you put your hand in the quail run, they would just like come up to you and you pet them. They get so big so fast and Preston actually harvested, I think it was two males and he actually made them for dinner and he enjoyed it. Why we don't have them anymore. We did bring them over here to the ranch whenever we moved everything from our old five acres and we were living in the camper and the actual quail cage that I had set up, it was up on stilts off the ground. The top flew off in a very, very strong windstorm and they just went bye-byes. And we've actually seen two this year. So they are still living or reproducing or whatever it is doing in the woods, but we've still seen some around and we hear them sometimes. So that's always great. Let's get these big humongous eggs into the incubator. I wanna share something really cool with you about quail eggs. Do you see how quail eggs are a pale color and then either a darker or a dark brown or black spotted pattern on them? Did you know that each quail egg will continue to reproduce that same pattern for their whole life? So whoever she was that laid this, she's always gonna have the same pattern 
I'm just gonna have the darkness on the top and on the sides, the patch on the bottom. But they're all so different. Some are dark, some are light, some are shiny, some are matte finish. Look at these. So different. This is so exciting. I just can't wait till these little cotton balls start popping out of their eggs. Whoa. Let's get out of here. Okay, we're out here in the shop with the GQF and we are gonna open it up and start setting these quail and chicken eggs. are so small what I did was they won't fit in here so what I did was I took a hatching tray you can see it here and I'm putting the egg holders inside the hatching tray so they can't fall through because it's got quarter inch hardware cloth underneath it so we're gonna take out our cute little chicken eggs and our cute little quail eggs and we are gonna start placing them pointy tip down in the egg tray. I'm having a hard time getting them out. They're so little and these things are so big. There we go. That's better. You almost have to push up the bottom of the tray just to get them out. Oh yeah, that's it. That's how you do it. quail eggs 49 so I'm gonna end up with a lot of quail and this is gonna be super exciting and maybe just maybe in eight weeks from now I'll be putting my own quail eggs in my GQF and we're gonna get this party started let's get those chicken eggs in chicken eggs go straight into the egg holder Okay, we got them all in here, and now it's time to push them back into the incubator. Make sure that these are on here. Now it's time to close the GQF. That was 33 chicken eggs that just went in the GQF. So because I do dry hatches, I don't have to worry about having different levels with different chicken eggs or even different species that are all on a different time period. Dry hatch is what works for me. So the quail are a little bit different than chickens. The quail eggs go for 18 days as the chicken goes for 21 days. So at about 15 days or so, you do put your quail eggs on lockdown. Whereas with chicken eggs at day 18, you put them on lockdown. So that's the only difference in them. The quail are gonna be a little bit more exciting for me this time because I haven't had them in a couple of years. Let's go finish our talk about the quail setup in the chicken coop. Hi everybody! Hello! Hello! Donkey, come on, let's go! Come on! We're gonna visit the chickens! Okay, we have arrived. Let's get in here with that. There you go. You guys only ate half your food today. I'm gonna come in here and talk. All right, it is cold. It is cold. Hi, welcome to the chicken coop. Some of our girls and our ducks over here, and our boy and some of the girls over here, and other ones, there you go, that is Scrappy Doo, are inside because it's actually really, really, really cold right now. I didn't realize it was this cold out. Let's talk about the quail coop. So as I showed you earlier in the video, my awesome neighbors gave me this little brooder and it's, I think they use it for chickens, but it's gonna be so perfect for the quail. I do have one that I used to use and it is right here. So I built this out of a shipping container. Do you see how it used to be like a square shipping container, except I cut the bottom part off. I added the top with wood panels. 
on each side so I could lift it up. And then I lined it with hardware cloth. See that? It works really good in the spring and in the summer, whenever the chickens can't get too cold and whenever it doesn't really rain. I have put a tarp over it and I have actually put a heat lamp in it at our old house and it worked really, really good. But this new one that the neighbor gave me is up and off the ground. It's probably about four foot tall. It has a box that they can go into to get out of the wind and the rain. It's got a full roof on it and then it has an open area. So three sides of it are hardware cloth and the bottom is hardware cloth. And I'm really excited to get out of the truck I'm trying to think of places to put it. First thought was, of course, I'm going to put it in the garage until the rainy season and the spring is going into summer for sure. But then my next thought was I could put it over my compost pile. So the quail poops go straight into the compost pile. And when I turn it, it'll mix. Yes, it's hot, but it'll, it'll be there for four to six months and it'll be able to decompose. And then my third thought is I could put that cute little quail coop in my garden. So every day when I'm out there, I could be with them. And then as I pick things off or pick weeds and things like that, I could put it in there for them to have. They can have some of the leaves from the broccoli and the lettuce and the cabbages, who knows? I have to look it up, but they might be able to have radish or tomato or carrots, squash, who knows? So I think that they might enjoy that. So comment below what you think I should do with it. It's going to be so awesome. And the whole reason that I have them, number one, I think it'd be really cool to have their eggs and try them. Now one chicken egg is equivalent to three quail eggs. Just to kind of give you an idea on size and how much they make whenever you fry them up or cook them in the microwave. Now once they grow out, there is a way that you could tell the difference between a male and a female. And we'll go over that once I have some that are fully feathered. Another thing that I need to keep in mind is in this coop, I should have a ratio of about five females to one male. Males fight. You can't really keep more than one male together with that, that ratio. Now, if I had a big, huge coop like this, you know, all penned in for them to fly, then it's still gonna be the same ratio. But if I had 20 females in there, I could have four males in there just to kind of give you a ratio on how that would work out. So I'm excited about that. I still have my waters and my, my feeders for them. I am thinking about doing a different watering system. I do want to get those little cups where they hit the little yellow bubble. And then as far as the feeders go, you just use those long feeders. What I did was took the shoe box Rubbermaid containers and I cut circles in it enough for their little head to go through to eat their food. And then when they were done, they could take it out, but they couldn't scratch the food and get it all over. And that worked really, really well. But I'll do another video whenever it's time for me to make that. Right now, all I'm worried about is they're in the incubator for the next 18 days. They're gonna be in the brooder for about three weeks until they're fully feathered. And then they will be in kind of a step down brooder like I have in my barn, but they still won't be outside for months because it's only January and it's freezing out here. So they're gonna be living in the barn, but I see this as a gateway to addiction of having a lot of quail. I do know that Preston will wanna eat some of the male quail, which is great and fine. I think it'd be really cool to keep as many eggs as I can and then start releasing them when they're full grown onto our property so I could see them and hear them around if we have a good environment and if we do some good land management in the areas I want them to stay. Um, I've read a lot about that. Some examples would be if you don't have a lot of native trees and plants, you could provide them for them and start growing them in certain areas. If you don't have a lot of brush cover, you could take an actual pallet and put it down on the ground and then cover it with bent over trees and hay and leaves. So they actually have a place to go out and get away from predators because they would go between the pallets. So, and you know, I've got tons of pallets if you've seen all those ones in front of the barn. So that's just some of my excitement. I'm really, really cold. So I think I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna finish saying hi to the chickens. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Where are we going? Don't go that way? Okay. Mm -hmm.